Hey guys, I'm John Fryer. Welcome to Fryer Funds. Welcome to my kitchen. It's finally time to start cooking the Fryer Feast. What's the Fryer Feast? It's semi-active investing for those that are working but have some money to invest in individual companies. So unlike the Fryer Pie, which is the other video series, this one we are going to be looking at individual companies, investing in them, trading in and out, but focused on trading only on the weekends. So I've set aside $15,000. I put it into a platform called Weeble or a brokerage. If you wanna follow along with that, use the link down in the description. Alternatively, you can use Robinhood or another brokerage if you really want to actually only execute trades over the weekend. I'll get into that in the video. But $15,000 focused mainly on weekend traders that don't have time during the week while they're working to actively trade. So if you have less money, you can still do it. Follow along, of course, not financial or legal advice. Consult your own advisors, make your own decisions, but follow along if you want to, and I'll show you how to break it down by percentages in the video. But I've already recorded what we're gonna do, so let's go ahead and dive into that. Okay, before we get started, of course, this is not financial advice, this is not legal advice, consult your own advisors, and make your own decisions. Now, with that out of the way, if you'd like to follow along with Weeble, use the link down below, sign up and get two free stocks when you deposit $100 or more. However, Weeble doesn't allow you to input trades over the weekend to execute for you on Monday. So use Robinhood, which I will also put the link down below, and you'll get one free stock. Otherwise, if you want to still use Weeble, you can. However, trades can only be put in during the week. So I'm still going to use Weeble because I can do that during the week. However, if you can't and you only want to put trades in over the weekend to execute for you on Monday, you'll have to use Robinhood or another brokerage. So let's go ahead and get into this. So Weeble, you go to trade. And then you'll see I have a $15,000 net account value. That's how much money I've put aside for this portfolio. Now there's um, buying power and overnight buying power. Don't worry about these. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be using the margins. I'm just going to be using this $15,000. And the only additional money to added to this will be the free stocks I get from referring viewers like you guys. So $15,000 to start with. Now I've set up watch lists for the frying pan, the grill, and the crock pot. Things that are a little too hot that need to thaw or cool down. And then the pantry for some other stocks that are... Um, Possibly good buys, just not necessarily right now. But to see these easier, now you can go in and look at them, but I've actually broken it down on how I decided on these and stuff over here for the Friar Feast. Now I have a $15,000 portfolio. When I invest, I look at percentages first and then the dollar amount. So 15% I wanna leave in cash, which leaves me about 2,200 in cash. 30% I wanted to put into the frying pan, which are stocks that should be good over the next six months. And once they've grown enough, we'll sell out and swap them in and out. That's why it's a frying pan. You, you know, buy and sell fairly quickly within six months. The grill is a little bit longer, six to 12 months. And these are going to be stocks that are currently on sale, like the airlines that have been hit really hard. And then the crock pot, 20% here. These are long-term strong companies, long-term holdings. Chances are won't ever end up selling them, or if we do, it's the things are gonna be a lot different at that time kind of a thing. So the, this is the long-term uh, list. So we're starting that as well with 20%, which is 3,000. So first off in the frying pan, we have stay-at-home shopping, stay-at-home plays, at-home, stay-at-home entertainment, and working from home. So on these, I've got eBay because it's not overvalued like Amazon and is it super expensive. Home Depot and Lowe's because these two companies, although it isn't necessarily staying at home to shop there, they are almost always busy right now, even busier than normal. So I'm expecting these to have a super run up once earnings are reported. J&J &J and Procter and Gamble are two strong brands. J&J &J, a little bit of the healthcare. So we're grabbing a little bit of that. Uber with Uber Eats, and it should recover pretty well once things come back online. And then UPS with all the deliveries from Amazon. Since we can't buy Amazon directly, UPS of course benefits from all the deliveries they're making. 
At Home Entertainment, I've got Disney because of Disney Plus, but they should also bounce back once theme parks open up and stuff. Hasbro for board games because board game searches in Google Trends is high. iHeartRadio, Roku, Snapchat, Tencent, Take-Two Interactive, Twitter, Vicon CBS, and Zanga. So we've got some gaming and some social media as well as streaming with Roku. These are gaming and then you've got just TV streaming there. So at home entertainment. And then working from home, Comcast because everyone will be upgrading their internet. You've got Cisco which has WebEx and a lot of networking stuff. Live person which allows a lot of the uh, customer service and other departments like that to interact with customers. And I really like where they're at. They really lag behind on the recovery. Not for any good reason other than a lot of people don't know about the company or don't think of it. So I, I really see these guys bouncing back strong. So I'm putting a full 2% into them. Uh, I'm also doing 2% on Home Depot and Lowe's because I like those plays and then UPS as well. Um, and then Micron for technology parts, basically. Same with Western Digital for storage. You've got security with Palo Alto Networks and Zscaler. And then you've got Qualcomm for 5G and then AT&T, similar to Comcast where it's an internet provider, but also cell phone usage. And they, they've got a strong dividend, although the, that may end up being cut a little. We'll kind of see how that plays out. But so these are the work from home companies I'm currently going with. So 10% in each category, $1,500 for each category. And then I broke it down into each individual company and percentage, looked at the current price, which if you want that, what you can do, in Google Sheets at least, is do equals Google Finance and then the stock ticker. So I pointed it over to the actual row or cell here. <coughs> Excuse me. So target amount just does some basic math. And then this, these are how many shares I decided to go with, giving you the total amount and then total here. So of the 1500 I was gonna put here, I'm currently sitting at 1480. Now this will change a little bit as these prices open up and change on Monday. But this is what I'm going to be targeting for come Monday. So I'll be buying all of this on Monday. Now over on the grill, these are a little more interesting in that these aren't companies or sectors that I normally look at anyway. However, because of everything going on, these are strong long-term recovery stocks. So we've got airlines with Boeing. I added in there along with one of their manufacturers, SPR. Um, now Boeing of course is kind of expensive so I have to do 1% because I have to buy the one share. You can do partials if you want but I like to do at least one share. So I've got one share of Boeing in there and then American Airlines, Delta, and UAL. Then away from home entertainment like Cinemark for home um, movie theaters, uh, Dave & Buster's, SeaWorld, and Six Flags. You've got some restaurants in here, DRI, DIN, RRGB, and Denny's. I forget exactly what these stand for, but these are the restaurants I found that their current levels aren't too bad. Like Yum Brands is a good company. Uh, they own a lot of fast food restaurants, but their current stock price is higher than what I'd like, so it doesn't have as much room to recover back as these guys do. Banks, same thing. We've got a couple banks in here. Each, most of these, except for, of course, Boeing, as a matter of fact, all of them except for Boeing, is just a half a percent, so they add up to the 2% for each one of these categories, 3% for airlines. And then I did a little bit less over here. Uh, but banks, we've got some retail companies, some cruise lines, two hotels, two oil, a little bit of automotive and some real estate. Now on the real estate, NRZ is for residential because I don't like commercial real estate for the most part right now. And then PK does a lot of hotel real estate. So this is kind of a tie in here so this should recover along with the hotels at the same time. So, cause I wanted some more hotel exposure, but they've recovered a little too hard already and we've got Airbnb coming. So by doing the real estate, that's kind of a play on that or an investment on the hotels. Uh, and then oil, aut automotive, sorry, automotive. I think a lot of people will be buying cars because they won't want to do public transit for a while as they're still afraid of the virus. So we've got Ford and then a used car dealership that's really big that should recover really well too. So I wanted to put some in there. So these are the breakdowns and shares and stuff that I'll be buying. So feel free to pause if you need to, if you wanna look. I know it's a lot of companies. I don't normally invest in so many companies. However, with everything going on, I wanna diversify across major sections or 
mm, sectors in a sense. So that's what I focused on and then just picked the best companies that I could find in each one. Now I didn't get to the full 20%, I'm at 16% right now, but that leaves me some growth or some room there to play with as I find other companies or if they start to move up drastically before I get a chance to buy them on Monday. And then the Crock-Pot, these are long-term strong companies. Of course you have Apple, Adobe, Salesforce, Facebook, uh, HP Enterprises, IBM, Intel, Intuit, Iron Mountain, Microsoft, ServiceNow, PayPal, Trade Desk, and Twilio. Now you will notice they're all basically tech companies. That's my background is tech and that's how I know who to research and stuff. But they're tech companies in different sectors. So like PayPal is of course a financial. You've got marketing with Take-Two Interactive, sort of Twilio. Uh, Microsoft of course is a really strong play because they have both enterprise commercial software as well as gaming with Xbox and Microsoft's all over the place. I think they're a really good company. And I'd like to buy more, but I think they've shot up a little higher than I'd like, but I still want to grab at least one share. So grabbing a little bit of Microsoft. Iron Mountain is more of a dividend play. Uh, I might, we'll see how we go with dividends going forward with this portfolio as things get back to normal. Right now I'm very much focused on the frying pan, the short term, and even these longer term ones. So I'm not gonna get much on the dividends right now. Um, and then we've got uh, a couple other dividends. You got IBM in there, that's a dividend, a strong dividend guy but Iron Mountain is the main dividend left that I've got here. But of course, Microsoft, Apple, and others give you dividends. So that's what I'm going for. Feel free to pause and look at what I'll be buying. I will do a screenshot in Webull when I can, possibly come Tuesday or Monday night. I'll execute all these trades Monday when, I, when it allows me to. I wasn't aware that Webull doesn't allow you to put in trades over the weekend until I went to record this and I've already set everything up to do it this way. So I'll be executing during the week on Monday with all of these buys. And then these are just others I'm looking at if you wanna take a look. You got Abbott, Amazon, of course. So Amazon and Google, which is not on this list, it's on the pantry. Amazon and Google are really good strong companies. However, each share price is so high that to buy it with this portfolio would be a large percentage. So I will have those in other portfolios of my own, but for this portfolio, I probably won't be buying those. But if you have enough money or you want to put that much of your percentage of your capital into it, go for it. I'm just not going to with this portfolio. But these are others that I think have overshot but are still strong companies. So if they shoot down really hard, well, I'll be grabbing these. And then these ones are like right in between. They're good companies. I'd like to buy them, but I think there are better ones that I've picked out. So they're still just on my watch list. So feel free to pause and take a look at those. Now, I don't wanna dive into companies in this first opening vid. This is just the starting of the portfolio and it's a lot of companies. You've got 14 there. You've got another 32 from the grill and then another 26 here in the frying pan. But again, they're not necessarily companies I'm focused on. This is more of this sector just because of everything going on. So like cruise lines, that's just one sector, but there's three companies to invest in there kind of a thing. Same with airlines. We've got five over here with Boeing and then restaurants, there's four, right? So I, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's only really 10 in a sense companies, but since it's broken into many companies, it's a little different just because of everything going on. Otherwise I don't normally invest like this, but there's so much growth and recovery and different times that I'd rather diversify in each individual sector here. So that's everything. If again, if you want to use Webull, you can, but you have to execute during the week. You can't do it over the weekend. Otherwise use Robinhood. Both links will be down in the description along with M1 Finance and you can sign up and get your portfolio going either with the $15,000 if, um, wait, let's go over here, $15,000 if you have that much, if you have 10,000, you can do the same thing that I did and broke it out or break it out by percentage and then just figure out how many shares you're going to buy based off that percent. Of course, it's not going to be exact. In this case, $150, 149, it's really close. Home Depot, I actually ended up going higher. So I wanted, I wanted to do 2%, which is $300. But because of the high share price, I actually just went ahead and I'll do two, which will be more than 2%. It'll be closer to uh, almost 3%. But yeah, so that's that's how you do it if you don't have 15,000 is do it by percentage, look at the dollar, and then figure out how many shares from there. So that's how I invest anyway. And that's 
that that's a good way of doing it unless you have enough money that um, you actually want to look at like doing it in chunks of 100 shares or something which is a whole nother level so anyway thanks for watching and yeah check out the links in the description like comment let me know what you think and we'll check on this next week and see where we're at